Yeah. It's June the 2nd, 2011. I'm Michael Benedetti. This is Five Boy, a show about Worcester. Also on today's show is Julius Jones. Oh, wait a second. Julius <laughs> Jones. Hi, Julius. How are you doing? Doing very well. Doing very well, Mike. And also, Brendan Mellican. Sir, how are you? Very good. And today, we're at Union Station. And apparently, we're at Union Station because they have good free Wi-Fi. Who knew? Julius, how are you doing? I'm doing all right, Mike. Good, good. Well, thanks for being on the show. I want to... Um, it's good to be back. We're going to talk to Julius about something. Let me let's let's do a quick let's do a quick review of uh, news of the week. Today's news written on a WRTA bus pass. Um, there's a big party coming up that Julius is going to talk about. There was uh, some tornado activity around here. There's a trail day thing, trail repair thing coming up. Tiffs and diffs, budget talk, happiness pony, in city times, and Nazis. That's what we're going to talk about on today's show. <laughs> Let's first talk about Julius. That sounds awesome. Julius, how's it going? Julius, not only famous for the Five Way Show, also today in the Worcester uh, and Pulse magazine here. Up in comers. That's Julius. <laughs> Julius, so, so people who are watching this on the internet are watching this whenever. People who are watching this on television are watching this early Friday night. Nice. What should they be doing later Friday night? Yeah, so Friday night at uh, 9.30.10 at the Sahara. It was on Highland Street. On Highland Street, 143 Highland Street, Highland and West Streets. Wait, are, are you rolling a cigarette? I am currently rolling. I'm very proud that we have so much smoking on the show. Here's the rolling. <laughs> I was mid-roll, and uh, it just seemed like the right thing to do. Uh, <laughs> um, so we're having, this, we're having a party. It's a group that I'm involved with called the Shadow Dancers. Okay. And uh, basically, we like to... We like to drink and have a good time and All right. and dance our asses off okay and sometimes we turn the lights off okay and they cast shadows really and we love to watch our shadows it sounds like kind of a good hippie experience it was it's a good clean mildly dirty hippie experience all right and so we we wanted to bring that energy and and uh sort of pizzazz to a dance party you know uh-huh. we want to have more dance parties in worcester and we we're thinking like what would be the best way to get people out it would have to be a good theme, right? So mm-hmm. we thought of this idea of shine, and it's like that moment when you, when you first fall in love and you see the other person, they have that immediate glow, sure. you know, like that's that's when you had shine because when you know when you love someone and they love you, you have the glow too. But there's mm-hmm. also like many examples of it, like when one of your favorite artists is like really in the zone in the middle of a show, or like a lot of times people talk about it with pregnant women, the pregnant mm-hmm. woman glow. It's like that that kind of energy, that shine, is what we want to bring to this dance party. And it's happening, well, for you tonight. It's happening at Sahara. At the Sahara. The Sahara, Friday, June 3rd. You can dress tuxedo to speedo, Cinderella to spinderella. So it's from like, it's from 9.30 to like 2, 1.45. If you can, people can dress exciting or not just exciting, but. You can dress however you want. You know, like. I wish I had a you tuxedo. feel like. I know, man. Me too. Well, I like it. I like the skin you got right now. Because <laughs> um, it's like, you know, it's not, it's not really a dress code. It's like a you code, you know? This like, is how do you about. shine? This is awesome. Thanks, man. Mike. Yeah. Yes. City on the move, right behind you. Here it is. City on the move. This is it. This is why it's the second biggest. It's actually moving the entire city. We're the second <laughs> biggest port in New England? Biggest port in New England. I think, well, I think in terms of landlocked ports, I think. We're the biggest, we're probably the biggest landlocked port in the entire world. <laughs> the biggest port with no water inside. Yep. There they are. Right there, huh? Hi there, buddy. <laughs> All right. He literally just stopped that with that his hand. That's noisy enough for the show. <laughs> <laughs> we got trains, we got wind. Well, okay, so let's just go down through. We got the shine out of the way. Uh, yesterday there was like some tornadoes in Massachusetts. Four people died, I believe. A lot of stuff got torn up. We have some maybe a lingering wind blowing through today. Although the weather's been really nice this afternoon, a lot of rainbows and stuff. I, I actually got to walk around in the tornado yesterday, or the or the the, the, the weather. There was a, I, w- I was walking down Main Street at one point, and the rain is blowing and everything. And there's these four guys standing in four guys standing in front of the uh, the Aurora there, uh, underneath the little shelter thing, all with their phones like pointed up towards this thundercloud. And I'm looking at the cloud and looking at the cloud. And I'll say, what are you looking at? And they're like, we're videoing the tornado. And I didn't see any tornado, but it was like that cloud, that storm, it was the tornado to them. It was awesome. Maybe there was, maybe they saw a funnel cloud at one point. I don't know, not when I was there though. Uh, yeah, big storm. I don't know. Any, any, any storm feedback? 
I don't know, man. I was shacked up in the RAC. <laughs> In the middle of like an interview for the REC, and uh, then one of my coworkers came running in like, "It's a tornado! It's a tornado!" Did you Get guys in the go? Basement. Did you go to the basement? <laughs> yeah, we were hanging out in the basement, hanging out top. Oh man, it's wild how these tornadoes are because they just like they'll like wherever they hit, boom, that place is gone. Everything else, more or less okay. Yeah, yeah, it's weird. It's weird, and then it happened. It's supposed to be like, like nothing, nothing, nothing. Bam, you're right. Yeah, you know, yeah. like it's 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 shocking. Yeah. I thought of it as like an aerial assault on, yeah. on Massachusetts, you know. Like when I was a kid, nature. when I was a kid, I, I grew up in I grew up in a part of Oklahoma that has a lot of tornadoes. That was the number one thing I was scared of as a kid, more than anything in the world. Oh man, it was tornadoes. And today I don't care. Maybe I've lost my will to live, but when I was a kid, I was super scared, like tornadoes and nuclear bombs. Brandon, Maybe you look it was like just uh, horses and clowns. It has nothing to do with tornadoes. <laughs> Clowns, I'm still stuck on. It. I'm working on the horse thing. That's, right. They seem nice. All right. Well, still, still speaking him. of working on the horse thing, let me give you. Let me do something here. There's a lot of weird close-ups of my head today, so I'm attempting to negotiate my book bag. We have a new. Uh, new issue of Happiness Pony is out. Here's the June issue. Oh, oh nice. You guys can look at that. Yeah. yeah. It's good. It's good to get this out. Of, you know, I'm sort of feeling, I'm sort of feeling depressed and fatigued this week. But at least we got another paper out, which is nice. There's a trail day coming up. This is in um, God's. Is God's Acre just below the airport? Yeah. It's, it's, well, it's. I thought it was a mile left of heaven. A mile left of heaven. Where is it, Brandon? It's that area. Um, you know, if you think of like where South High is. Yeah. Um, so like think of like that corner heading up Goddard Memorial Drive. Yeah. And then like up to the airport. Yeah, like all those that, that stuff. It's some woods. It's some woods. It's some woods. And people should go from 4 to 7 on Saturday. We'll have a link to it in the show notes. There's, and you can also just Google God's Acre, June the 3rd, or June the whatever, the 4th, in Worcester. Uh, people are going to go up there. They're going to fix up some trails and things. The land trust is involved, I know. Should be a good thing. You know, I've, I've spent literally years of my life on trails. I've never really done more than like a day or two of trail work in my life. I feel like I owe it. Maybe I can get over there. If I can figure out where it is. You gotta like pay it forward. Paying it forward. Well, just paying it back. Pay, I've yes. already had plenty of it paid forward to me. I'm just like paying it back. Um, oh, what do we got? We got uh, we got Nazis. Let's, uh, I'm gonna talk about the Nazi stuff real quick. Actually, do you want to talk about the last time the Nazis, the the, the February time? You remember that? Because <laughs> we talked about this on the show. We had this good experience. <laughs> that was so awesome, like that. <laughs> tell, tell this story. I love this story. So. The Nazis are, are post were scheduled to hang out at the Worcester Public Library to, I don't know, condemn something or no they were they had no no they purposefully scheduled their their meeting during Black History Month across the across the library from when they were showing uh, I forget what the movies were some Black they, History movie yeah it was like a Black History movie right yeah so everybody in Worcester is like by the way there's two girls watching us from the I'm not gonna film them but they're watching us from the <laughs> Oh, so, I, 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 every time you lean forward, you can see it. Anyway, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm going out there. I'm going to see what's going on, you know, see see what's happening. And then I, I see Mike. And I'm like, hey, Mike, you know, how you doing? He's like, yeah, you know, come out check out the Nazis. Yeah, go check out the Nazis. And then I see this library worker, like, given Mike, who had and has uh, low-cut hair. And like, pale skin. Like, the meanest look. Like, the <laughs> meanest look. Like, scared me how, how deep he was looking at Mike. He was, like, seething, you know? This library worker. And then I, <laughs> I looked at Mike, I looked at the guy, I looked at Mike, I looked at the guy, and then me and Mike hugged. <laughs> and Julie said, he's okay. <laughs> it, was, it was very hilarious. You saved, you, you saved me from the wrath of the library. <laughs> It was a weird. Uh, that was a weird interaction. It was a weird. It was a weird racial moment. It was. I don't know, man. I've never good. experienced anything like that. <laughs> like since then or before, man. It's crazy. It was. A, it was awesome. Though. Well, I don't know, Julius. Did you know that they? Did you know that the Nazis actually came to Worcester ten days ago? No. It was Saturday afternoon. Apparently, there was like a twenty-four hour head lead time. So, there's no main. There's been no mainstream coverage of this. I've talked to people who have led on to me that this actually happened. So I've talked to people face-to-face who I believe know that this happened. The Nazis have a tiny article on their website. Uh, the counter-Nazis, the other, the, uh, what is it, One People's Party guys, have a report on their website, which I kind of don't put a lot of credence in, but it's a much longer report. So apparently what happens is, it's Saturday afternoon, 
So I was at church. I, I, I was at church, so I couldn't see go to this anyway. But apparently, according to the Nazis, a bunch of like kids in ski masks run in there. There's there's like literally like three Nazis and like a couple of Worcester people who are like anti-Nazi, but who are just sort of there in in the sense of like we're going to listen to your crap and then we're going to engage you in an argument, you know. So there's like three there's like three Nazis, three members of Northeast White Pride, three Nazis and like a couple of anti-Nazis sitting there in the library meeting room. And the Nazi guy's going on about something and suddenly like 20 kids in ski masks burst in and start a melee. Like a, I would call it a brawl except that I haven't really read any accounts that claim that the Nazis actually like fought back. But like people were like whacked in the head. And like the police came and this whole thing. And so like the Nazis, I should say that the Northeast White Pride website says that these kids ran in, caused a commotion, and then ran out like cowards. Whereas the people, who, person who's writing from the point of view of the kids in the ski masks says, oh, no, there was like this total fight and like some dude got clocked with a bike lock and all this stuff. Unfortunately, there's, I don't feel like either of these are that credible of sources to me to be able to say what really happened. Yeah, yeah. And there's no mainstream coverage and there's no, apparently there was some kind of police, but there's no police report in the paper or anything that I saw. Very crazy. Anyway, I just want to talk about that this happened. I don't know. I mean, like I said, this is based on articles I read on the website and rumors I've heard around town. If only we had a medium whereby people could gather information and then publish that information in a, a format, maybe on paper or like via you know, invisible waves in the air where it would come to like a box in your house or something. You, know, like a, like you would need box. some sort of full-time professional to run a medium <laughs> like that, Brent. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah. System, yeah. I don't know. Anyway, this is that's, that's a mean way to say, please come on, journalists, just write about this story. Just research this story and write about this story. Because I am in, I am in no position to, to deal with a story like this. Um, anyway, that's the that's the that's the rumor which is, seems to be confirmed at least in parts by both sides. So I don't know, kind of crazy. Um, well, of course, in the Nazis, it's like, oh yeah, those kids came in and then we were so white and awesome that they just ran out. Yeah. And then of course, in the other kids, it's like, oh man, we totally went there. Yeah. Ass. You know I mean? So it's like, it high school like high school uh, drama. Taken to the Worcester Public Library with like it adults. <laughs> well, you know, I, I I remember there's a there's there's one uh, there's one woman who's a longtime progressive activist in Worcester, who sort of blogs under a pseudonym, so I don't want to out her about this. But she wrote a really interesting thing talk whenever the, the whenever there was a thing in February, which is when the Nazis were coming to the library and they got asked not to come because it was going to cause a problem, and they agreed not to come, and then they complained that they had agreed not to come, and it was there's a bunch of whining going on. But she was talking about why she didn't go to that. She's like, you know, like, everything these guys are for, I'm against, I'm totally opposed to this. But she's like, based on all the stuff that I've read about what's going to go down at this counter-protest, that this is just a bunch of macho nonsense. This is just a bunch of, this is just a bunch of young men who ordinarily want to go around being like, I'm not like some sort of, some sort of frat boy thug, who like, when the opportunity arises, they just want to go beat somebody up like any other punk in the city of Worcester. She's like, and I'm not about that. And that was her, that was like her psychoanalysis of what was going on. Now that was, and that was maybe partially true for that. I don't know. It sounds like it was maybe even more true for this. I don't know. If you have, if you have the ski mask and you were there, you should come on the show also. You can email us at pineandcoffee at chima.com or you can just call the press and actually have the real adult reporters. You could probably keep the ski mask on. If you you could keep the ski mask on on this show. I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. Very low standards. Unless you're, well, okay. I was going to say. We, yeah. Not a reflection of the three of us. But we're just, <laughs> no, we're just no. saying. That we're no. Saying that. No, exactly. Well, okay. So let's talk about uh, what. How much time do we got? Oh, I mean, we got plenty of time. <laughs> so there's a lot going on about budget stuff. Actually, we should talk about the NC Times too. So there's two good. There's two good articles in the NC Times. This is another thing where I feel like the NC Times screws up often enough that like it's not. It's frustrating. I wish that they were more accurate because then it would be a great. I could sort of more excitedly recommend their articles. But Barbara Howler has a thing about the budget, the city budget. And it's mostly her talking about like the state of union negotiations. Like how the city is the city is I guess this I guess the philosophy, correct me if I'm wrong, Brendan Melican, is that a lot of the city's budget is what do you call the stuff that's like not negotiable? It's like you've already committed to it. Oh, you know, the stuff that would bridge you through, through collective bargaining. Like yeah, benefits and it's like union salary stuff. and benefits. So it's like so it's not stuff where the city can be like, let's cut this thing back. It's more stuff like there's like all or you have got like right, pensions and, and you've got committed pre committed something. Oh yeah, what yeah, is yeah, that I've word? Heard that term before. I don't know. And we're 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 very tired and depressed from the tornado today. So anyway, she's basically just talking about like where's where's this how sort of like step by step what's been going on with the with the unions, how much money's being saved, where things need to go from here. And I feel like Barbara Haller is, you know, not making stuff up in the city Times, so that's pretty good. 
um, that's probably worth reading. Also, we have this article by Grace Ross called Worcester's Foreclosure Crisis, What You Need to Know to Save Your Home. This is kind of a cool article because it's mostly, um, it's like mostly narrative. It's like mostly an oral history from different people talking about how they went through their foreclosure, the forecl avoiding a foreclosure, what they wish they had known that would be different. And um, it's unfortunately, it's strung together by these sort of like little paragraphs from Grace, which are an otherwise hard to tell apart from the rest of the article. So it sort of runs as a weird, it's a little bit like reading Ulysses, this thing. But it's very good. It's very good. I, I think if somebody, I, I wish that they would put this kind of stuff online. Because I think if you were worried about a foreclosure or whatever, reading other people's stories, especially people's stories in the city of Worcester, would be helpful. Yeah. yeah. You guys want to talk about tiffs and diffs? Not really, man. You know what? Here's what I want to know. <laughs> what is what is going on with this? So the idea is that we've got the city square. We're putting in like a cancer hospital in city square, mm -hmm. like a big, big insurance building in city square. To get these things financed, the city is giving these guys tax breaks on their property taxes, and like basically helping them get these bonds, like mm -hmm. state bonds, like helping pay the whatever on state bonds. Well, bonding for construction costs. Yeah. For the construction costs. So. Basically, the city's like bending over backwards to do all this financial stuff to get these guys. Just like, please, for the love of God, put something in City Square. We don't care what Anything it costs. Anything but a hot dog vendor. <laughs> Anything, as long as you don't have a hot dog vendor or a knife more than three inches long, uh, 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 or or a stocky or dog. Or, and please then, smoking. Oh yes, or anything fun, please. But the cancer hospital and uh, uh, insurance company, right on right on the agenda. So sure. So the problem is, I have not read any. So I tried to read some articles today to understand what was going on in City Worcester. And I get totally bogged down. I haven't seen a single article that explained to me, like they all basically assume that I know a lot about construction financing in right. the city of Worcester. And I don't. I recently and, took a really long class on uh, uh, you know, uh, construction financing here yeah. in the Commonwealth, and I still don't have any idea how it actually functions. It's a really confusing process. Yeah. yeah. It's something that you need to focus just on that. So yeah, it's not the sort of thing, like a TIF is, you know, you, you can claim to get it, but unless you really are involved in it, you don't get it. Tax incentives on, on projects that are in the hundreds of millions of dollars, it's not the sort of thing that like your lawyer can explain to you while you're signing off a mortgage, right? It's so this is, so this is, uh, so, so I guess, I guess I should say then uh, my challenge to journalists and to bloggers alike is somebody write a really good article about TIFs and DIFs. Yeah. You'll be saving my life. It'll be like that one, that'll be like that one This American Life about the uh, the the financial crisis the big was the big pile of money because you can that? boil it down into boil it down for me in, into something meaningful for the the layperson to digest but it, just throwing out there an acronym it, it's it's a pretty big acronym to swallow all at once Tana Hussey like, Coates always says talk to me like I'm stupid you don't even have to talk to me yeah. like I'm stupid talk to me like I'm not an accountant especially when you're talking <laughs> economics exactly you have to talk to people you know human beings by, by design don't get big numbers right we're terrible with big numbers you have like ten of something in front of you you can usually figure that out I don't even, devices. it's not even the numbers of something in front of you it's like the steps of what's going beans. on it's it's the steps of what's going on and it's some comparison because right. like I need to have numbers to compare it to too like don't just tell me we're saving this much money. Like, give me some numbers yeah, to compare. And there to. isn't a jar big enough to fill with enough jelly beans to compare those numbers to the jelly beans, right? Yeah. So there's nothing. All what right. they need to do in the city, though, is figure out a TIF or DIF program, like a tax incentive program for for homeowners. This That's is why the thing that I can never this, figure right? out is that, like, you know, we're always talking about how it's the middle class that's being, you know, the squeeze is being put on the middle class. So they're fleeing the city and what have you. Yet all the tax incentives go to large corporations, which have plenty of tax incentives to begin with, right? I mean, that's part right. of why you start a corporation. They're not going to. They're not nickel the and dime. The tax code is kind of written to benefit. You're you. not going to do this nickel and dime stuff, though. It's like this is why I think it aggravates people, even people who say, "Yes, we need to deal with this mall." The woman has amazingly bright hair. Yes, we need to deal with this mall. Yes, we need to put something in there. It still rubs a lot of people the wrong way when you start talking about tax breaks because right. it's like, because it's because you know because it's not fair, right? And because it's like you know what, like this guy's running a for-profit business. And you're going to give him a tax break because he's got enough money to like bring you to the negotiating table. I have a little store, or I have a little thing that I'm manufacturing something, or I'm a I have a little office, and you're not going to come to the table and negotiate with me. I get lumped in with everybody else. And people don't expect efficiency from government. People don't expect even efficacy from government a lot of time. But people expect fairness from government. Like the whole yeah. point is like they bend over backwards and they waste lots of time and money to make sure these things are distributed fairly or done fairly. And when you start talking about these kind of deals, it just feel, people just feel like it's unfair. 
Yeah, it's like... You said it well, man. That's, I, it, that, that's exactly the problem. And I think the, the other issue, too, is especially when you're dealing with local governments, historically local governments are where you see the majority of corruption and waste. You know, we always like to think that it's a federal government that's just pissing all this money away, right, and, and doing the wrong thing all the time. It's actually in your own local government. The smaller the government, the more likely to see corruption and waste and what have you. And it's much harder, you know, due to transparency issues on, on a local level to actually figure out what is taking place in real time. So, you know, a project like that, you know, maybe, maybe the building just shows up, right? And maybe we cure cancer in Worcester, and that would be a beautiful thing. But to get from point A to point B and figure out the, the financial traction, transactions in between, that's a really big deal for the people who call Worcester home. And we oftentimes don't get to see the nuts and bolts of those deals in action. I feel like I want to be part of this discussion, but I still feel like, like I said, I feel like I need to get educated. And I, Likewise. I, I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea where to start. I have no idea where to start in getting educated on this. Yeah, I watched a, a great TED Talk on this very idea of, like, uh, that the processes by which these these big things are done mm -hmm. is inherently disengaging, and it's mm -hmm. not that people are apathetic. It's just that from the onset they get uh, sort of like disenfranchised or like not included in the process because it is so esoteric. You know, right. Right. like when you guys said tips and dips, it, like it might as well have been like a club or something. Oh, you know? I don't like, even I really remember what they stand for. Talking about. Yeah. I love acronyms and I don't remember what they stand for. <laughs> Tax incentives. Or Tax incentives something and the, the DIF is development incentive or, yeah, innovation yeah, yeah. something. Yeah. I don't. So I mean and I, I consider <coughs> the three of us to be fairly smart people yeah. and I don't consider the chain of concepts to be out of my control either. Yeah. But when you don't use basic language you know when you don't talk to someone like they're not in the in the lingo when in you the, use yeah. esoteric language yeah. you just disengage people and it's like yeah. ah I don't want to deal with that I got kids you know who did the TED talk do you remember any oh man what's, what's, know, what's the keyword how can I find it okay. oh, uh, people are not apathetic people are not apathetic yeah, yeah. we'll people try to find it and we'll try to link to it yeah it was a great it was a really great TED talk and it goes through ways that uh, that that news news organizations and journalists can offer more information be proactive about like closing that gap more so yeah. It was basically like, uh, you know, if you want to buy an Usher song, you know, like they'll give you a link to the iTunes website that like you can buy an Usher song. Right. But if it's an article about um, President Obama signed some bill that doesn't right. make sense but it has a huge impact, they don't put a link to the WhiteHouse.gov or to uh, the bill that's actually being passed. It's just like left there for you to you do figure your own, it you out on do your, your own. own research. Yeah. You know, who does yeah. an amazing job of that in my opinion, the Glenn Greenwald. Yeah, I mean, someone who just completely rips apart like really, really high level, big deal government action, but he footnotes everything and, and leaves you with something that you can read in five minutes on a lunch break. Uh, but if you're really interested in digging deeper, there's a link to every story that's been referenced in the past, nice. uh, links to personal bios and whatnot. And you know, it's like actually making use of the internet the way I think it was designed to be used, right? Like something that's self annotated, you know, just by virtue of being able to link to other, other subject matter. It mean, doesn't require any pre-knowledge. Yeah, you know? I mean, so you're talking about some really, really genuinely difficult to understand issues, but you walk away knowing exactly what the writer is trying to discuss by virtue of them explaining it to you in real time. You know, if you can pause and instead of looking up a definition of the word, you're actually, you know, educating yourself on the story from four years ago that he's referencing in real time. You don't get that in a newspaper, and, and rarely do you get it online, you know, even from journalists who should know better. Yeah. Well, they don't. The other thing they don't have too, at least the Telegram Gazette doesn't have, for example, is like a definitive, like a definitive City Square article, like a de, like the Encyclopedia <coughs> Wisteria article on right. City Square, where like we're going to update this article once a week or once a month, and we're always going to link back to it. So anytime we grab an article about City Square, you read the article in the paper. It sort of assumes that you know some of the background, but that if you don't, you could sort of link to it and say like, here is our which I think is take on what's really going on. Which I think should have been or was the original idea behind Wikipedia, right? But I mean, it seems like those of us in Worcester who should be doing a lot of this stuff and putting together That's more true. local We should uh, be writing the City Wikipedia Square article. We could be doing this ourselves. I'll, I'll take some degree. I'll take 3% of the fault for that. All right. All right. Well, you guys got anything else for this week? Uh, it's really beautiful out. What can I do to cheer myself up this week, Julius? Go to, go to your party, I guess. I think you should definitely come to the Shine Party. It's, right. uh, it's really a party of love. and uh, you Go early and eat some food. Sahara's got great food. It really does. That place is always way too empty for the quality of food that they're selling. Be good there. vegan stuff, too, man. It's not Loose. my role, but I'll, I'll, I'll take your word for it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, Brendan Melican. Thank you, sir. And Julius Jones. <laughs> and Mike Benedetti. And a big train. We'll see you guys next week.